People ask why I get so angry and why I work so hard, and, and it's the old classic statement because it's true. That's why anybody stands up. I love my children. And I know that the globalists are building a world that is very oppressive and very anti-human and that sees us as basically obsolete. That's just the excuse of these robber barons to want total, absolute control over everyone's lives. They want the final revolution. And I was sitting back today thinking about why they target InfoWars and why they're so scared of it. And it's simple. There's a war on men. There's a war on nationalism. There's a war on resistance. And who's going to resist a big global authoritarian takeover? Historically. It's, 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 it's men that, that tend to organize and lead against it. And that's why Gavin McGinnis, right after Glenn Beck took over CRTV, I know the inside baseball, that's why he got kicked off the air. And that very day he got kicked off, the FBI, so they can't get sued, said, actually, we never said he was an extremist group or the Proud Boys were bad. But it didn't matter. They'd already had leftist FBI tell the media that, so that just saying you're an extremist, you get banned off Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere else. So that's how this operates. And what was his crime? Saying we believe the nation state exists. We believe that men have a right to be men. They were inclusive to all men. And it's fraternal order of men. Not men watching football. Not men watching basketball. Not men being led around by their nose, by their so-called feminist wife that really just gets orders from the government. But no, just, just men being men. That is incredibly frightening to the globalists. And having nationalist movements Letting people get organized and, and, and come together, that is extremely frightening because if you can't let men organize and you won't let them get together, well, then you've got total checkmate over the civilization and over the population. And that's why there's a war on men because there's a war on the family. There's a war on the individual. And there is a system where now the state becomes the pimp, the pimp daddy of the women, the women are the house slaves, I'm not saying women are the house slaves. I'm not saying women are even buying this, but this is the big goal is to divide men and women from each other. And if you can do that as a species, we're done. So this is full spectrum dominance that we're facing, period. So we'll talk about some of that today. We're going to have Gab McGinnis on the show here in the next few days. But uh, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the establishment is making their move ahead of some very, very big events. Now, the Democrats and the incoming head of the House Intelligence Committee have made open announcements that they have a plan to arrest President Trump. That's right. Now, they can't really do that under the Constitution. But they don't care. There's a lot of stuff they do that isn't in the Constitution. Uh, and Schiff, Trump may face real prospect of jail times. The quote, com and Newswars.com, the most banned and demonized pro-America sites in the world, Congressman Schiff, taking over the Intelligence Committee in the House on January 2nd, says Trump may face, quote, real prospect of jail time. And ABC, NBC, hype President Trump's inevitable impeachment by the Dems. You know, they said during the campaign they weren't going to do that because Americans, you know, wouldn't have supposedly voted for Democrats in the midterms. But, oh, now they are because they're desperate to cover up their own crimes. Meanwhile... Trump has accurately tweeted that Comey lied to Congress. Comey told Congress, here's the big one of the 245 occasions that he lied that Trump's talking about. The big one that's, that's ironclad is Comey saying, I've never leaked and I don't know anyone that's leaked to the media. And it turned out he was the chief leaker, but he went, well, I, I gave the information to give it to the press to a professor who would then give it to him? Oh, oh, so if I'm a drug dealer and I give them the uh, suitcase full of cocaine and then my dealer goes and sells it to somebody, I'm not involved in the cocaine dealing. Balderdash, BS, baloney. And it goes on and on and on. And to watch the corporate press try to cover it up, it is just mind-blowing. And Two years in, $33 million in, and just this fake investigation, and they have 
people pleading guilty for not paying taxes for taxi cab services that Trump has nothing to do with in New York. Michael Cohen, who did a 180 once they busted him and other crap like that. I mean, this is incredibly ridiculous. But they mean business. So we're going to be looking at all of that coming up. We're going to be looking at the EU and the fact that it's unelected, it's authoritarian, it's run by the grandson of the richest Nazi family. His father was also a Nazi, Juncker, a man who can't even dress himself on record, but was never elected, but just keeps running the EU decade after decade. Uh, they've had, as you know, three weeks of riots in Paris. We've had our own Dan Lyman and other reporters on the ground there filing incredible live video reports to Infowars.com and Newswars.com the last few days. And they are nationalists. They are patriots. They're sick of the Islamic invasion. They're sick of the welfare state. They're sick of the working families and farmers being killed by these massive carbon taxes. They are patriots, just like they are in Brazil, uh, electing nationalists. And in Spain is now electing in every election right-wingers, populist nationalists. Germany, Merkel's party's lost power completely. Uh, she's still there for another year as a lame duck. I don't have to name all the places. The Brexit, it goes on and on. The point is, is that they're losing the hearts and minds. So they're rushing in with global censorship. They're rushing in with global control. They're rushing in with trying to arrest people for their speech who they see as, as, as leaders of nationalist movements. But it's not going to work in the end, ladies and gentlemen, for one simple reason. People like being sovereign. They like their own culture. They know when they're being conquered and taken over, and the socialists are joining the nationalists and the right-wingers all over the world, from Brazil to Italy, from the UK to you name it. The blue-collar union workers voting for Trump two years ago, the Reagan Democrats, because they know the bringing in tens of millions of illegals to be put on welfare and be client states of the EU and the U.S. and other globalist controlled countries is meant to bankrupt the national pension system, which the globalists admits the plan. And so that's why in every European country where they have a vote, people understand that Soros and others have bragged. He's part of the EU. They want to bankrupt and scuttle the EU and then out of that big global crisis, get full control and get trillions in bailouts. But then you lose your pension fund in the process. Now, that is coming up as well when Dr. Nick Begich, of course, his father is a famous congressman, his brother, you know, senator, but he, he he's best known for his best-selling books on MK Ultra mind control, weather modification, all these different secret programs that more and more are out in the open. He'll be in studio with us coming up in the second hour. But when we come back, I've already given a little bit of a prelude to it. I've already given you a bit of a foreshadowing. But we are going to get specifically, specifically into their plan to remove Trump and the fact that the Democrats have announced their plan. Top Democrats have announced their plan to try to arrest and imprison the president. How sensational is that? And you say, but that's crazy. They have committed all these public crimes. That's precisely why they're making their move is because they know people don't listen to them anymore. They know they're going to lose if we have real elections in this country. So they want to end real elections and freedom in this nation completely and show the country up. <sighs> Think about it. Everyone understands that if you want to conquer a nation, you demoralize it, you make it hate itself, you demonize its flag, you demonize its character, you divide people, and then you target any men who try to organize other men and other women and other people in a defense of our common heritage and our common infrastructure and what we've paid for and built. Just common sense instinct to stand up for yourself. And that's why InfoWars is so attacked and so lied about and constantly harassed by these deep state forces. You see it all over the news. Because they know, we're, we're pointing out, they're the globalists, they're the outsiders, they're the ruthless megabanks that literally pay no taxes and have diplomatic immunity and who 
see us in our open society as an easy plum to take down from within. And so I'm here raising the alarm saying this is a fraud and this is wrong, and they know that the military and the police and the president and other corporate leaders who are not evil realize this is really true, and we're creating a dichotomy between the globalists that hate the nation and want to conquer us and those of us that love what's good about America and believe in our exceptionalism and believe in a future for us together and that believe that we have a right and a duty to stand up against this. And so that's why they hate us so much because they can't even allow us to exist because they don't want to have a debate about what they've really set up. Remember, just four years ago, Every newspaper in the country had articles every few weeks saying there's no new world order, the Federal Reserve isn't private, nobody wants a world government, there's no carbon taxes, there's no plan to break up families, there's no plans, and then boom, there's no Agenda 21, there's no plan to take your guns, and now they're all over the news saying we're going to ban the Second Amendment, we're going to break your families up, we're going to force medical procedures, tainted vaccines on you, GMO, yeah, we're weather modification. We don't care what you think. Yeah, the EU's unelected. We're going to arrest anybody that criticizes what we're doing. Yeah, we're going to ban all conservative and Christian speech. Yeah, the men in the military is obsolete. It's all going to be robots. Yeah, we're going to have a mark of the beast, microchips for the general public. Yeah, we've got a world government. Yeah, we've got a global social score. Yeah, the communist Chinese have put spy chips in all the devices and are working with deep staters to take down America. Everything we told you is true. So our credibility's gone up so high, we must be removed off the air. That simply stands up for justice and freedom, and especially anybody that stands up for the American way. Now, let's get into it right now, because here's the drumbeat. For two years, they've been telling President Trump, oh, you're not the target, sir. We know you're not involved in Russiagate. In fact, there's nothing there. But they're just doing their investigation, even though it's all a bunch of people brought in by Hillary and Obama when you were president-elect. and They were panicking. Well, what were they going to do? They'd been in bed with Russia. They'd been in bed with China. They'd sold the nation out. They're the folks that say having a nation's bad, that America existing. America was never great. It'll never be great. Governor Cuomo in New York. We're going to plunge the economy to stop Trump. Bill Maher. Federal Reserve's doing it. So these are the anti-American team in their own statements. Oh, but now Trump turning the economy around in so much in two years. Oh, he's the, he's the agent, right. And all of you that voted for him, you're all Russians too. Because the Democrats are desperate to cover up the fact that they're the people that have been selling America out. So now look at these headlines just today that are up on Newswars.com and Infowars.com. And then go to DrudgeReport.com. Let's go to DrudgeReport.com, the main, main front page of it, and just look at the crazed look of Schiff. You know, Schiff and Alexander Cortez, you're not just waiting for a weird moment to grab a screenshot that isn't honest. They always have that power-mad lunatic look in their eyes. I mean, this guy is incredible. He, kept, he helped cover up Uranium One, all the crimes of Hillary, her foundation, and here he is on national television today, we're going to play the clip in a moment, saying Trump's going to have jail time. He, 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 Trump may face real prospect of jail time. And they're getting you ready, because they always told the president, oh, sir, we know you didn't do anything, so he wouldn't move on them early on. They wanted to build the fraud up. And Trump thought he'd turn the economy on and secure the border and increase the military pay and try to get rid of the unfunded you know, mandate of uh, Obamacare, which he, and, and, and give you two good Supreme Court justices compared to what Hillary would do, and thousands of new factories coming back and the best unemployment numbers in 100 years. Let's see. That was his blind spot that he was innocent. So he thought this is a joke. They don't care. They're going to go knowing you have hundreds of lawyers over properties, like people you raided in Chicago, they're raiding a bunch of Trump lawyers, and then they'll find one of the Trump lawyers not paying taxes, and they tell them, you go say President Trump told you to do this and that, or you're going to serve decades in prison. And then people like Michael Cohen will totally change 
their tune from Trump knew nothing about big deal of uh, private money being transferred to an old girlfriend. Wasn't even campaign funds. The money was reimbursed. The Clintons have billions in, in illegal stuff in their foundation, but that's okay. Just, oh, Trump, years ago, money to a woman from a decade plus ago, and now we want to indict the president, even though it's a separation of powers, these grand juries won't be able to do anything, but the media knows the public's ignorant about the separation of powers, and so they're going to act like the president's going to jail to build the momentum that everything he does is illegitimate so they can then whew, breathe a sigh of relief and get him out of office and not go to prison for all the real crimes they've committed. And that's why they're so dangerous. Andrew McCarthy, why Trump is likely to be indicted by Manhattan U.S. attorney. We'll play that next segment. That's Fox News. The major takeaway from the 40-page sentencing memorandum filed by federal prosecutors Friday for Michael Cohen, President Trump's former personal attorney, is this. The president is very likely to be indicted on a charge of violating federal campaign finance laws from a stool pigeon who's pled guilty to laundering $15 million separate from the president in a taxi cab company who's totally changed his testimony and who's been indicted for lying to the FBI and lying to Congress. So a known liar, they claim, now changes the story. But remember, we're going to play this coming up, too. Remember when the news like, we have the tape of Trump paying off Stormy Daniels and, and some other woman. We have the tape. And Cohen walks in and goes, hey, how's it going? And Trump's like, okay, great, what's going on? Well, you know, we're going to need to make a payment. No, 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 what are you talking about? What? No. uh so it's the opposite. But it's like the Jim Acosta video where he grabs the mic from the intern and pushes her arm down. And they go, he didn't touch her. Fake video, Alex Jones. Everyone saw it. We didn't do anything but zoom in. But this is the games, the mind control they play. And they go on to say, Fox News can now tell you Trump is the target. Hell, we told you before the investigation started they were going to do this and he was the target. We told you he was being illegally spied on. And CNN goes, InfoWars is the source of Trump being illegally spied on. Uh, yeah, because we got the DEA documents with my personal phone numbers that nobody's got and Trump's and everything else, and then more of it came out, and they bragged they were spying on him. Illegally. And found nothing. That's all the real crimes. Nixon got kicked out of office for spying on one psychiatrist. They've all been doing it. Where's that? If Trump doesn't move against them now because he can't find any good men that'll take action in the Justice Department. It just shows what a bucket of cowards America has become. And even though we had a good president in there, he couldn't find a dog that would hunt. In the whole world. So we're going to go to break, and then I'm going to come back and play all three of the clips. I'm going to play Schiff. I'm going to play the Democrats saying they're going to start impeachment. And then I'm going to play uh, Andrew C. McCarthy getting into the fact that they're going to indict the president. So there you go. And is it for Russia? No. It's for Cohen sending money to a woman the president had sex with 12, 13 years ago. And that's it. There's your Russia, ladies and gentlemen. He's not in a Russian hotel getting pissed on. None of that's true. All of it's lies. Oh, by the way, Comey admitted in testimony to Congress this week was closed door, but they, they released a transcript. He says he's such a liar, they demanded there be a transcript released, the Republicans did. And he admits, oh, no, we know the still dossier is fake. And, of course, remember Comey lied to Congress and said that he never knew anything about the dossier or steal or spying on the president, and he never knew anybody that leaked. He Well, he was asked, have you talked to the media about any of this? Oh, no, I've never talked to the media. I've never, I know nothing. I know nothing, nothing, no. Remember Hogan's Heroes, if you're old enough to remember that? I know nothing, nothing, no. Chai Com. God almighty, I can't believe the fact that Trump can't get enough people to move against these scum. But let me just stop right there. The entire Democratic Party is about destroying America and selling us out. They're globalists. The Republicans have been a bunch of cowardly blue bloods, scared of the corporate media and scared of the left. Now Trump and the Nationalist Tea Party Liberty Movement has gained a major foothold in Congress and the presidency and most of the states. 
And so the Democrats are resorting to election fraud. They're resorting to uh, indicting their political enemies. Like 10 members of the House got indicted by Democrats and ended up losing their seats. Two of them in California. They've taken the damn gloves off. And it's not like we're looking for a fight here, but it, it's kind of like once you get in one, you're not scared anymore. It's like, well, that guy just knocked me upside the head. I'm in a real fight. And you know what? Suddenly, things start going your way when you finally realize you're in a fight, don't they? Instead of always pretending you're not. We're in a fight. I'm getting my guts kicked out here. But you know what? I'm kicking and I'm biting and I'm punching back, baby. And I can tell you right now, our enemy ain't doing too well. <laughs> All over the world. So let's stop being wimps. You know, most of the men I know aren't like Trump. People say, the worse it gets for Trump, the worse it gets for you. Why do you get more pro-Trump? Because he's real, ladies and gentlemen. And I watch everybody else kind of move away because they want to sit there and secure their future. We're going to lose our whole future letting these anti-free market, anti-God globalists in control, period. And if people don't have the instinct or the understanding of that at a spiritual level, you have no discernment. And I, I just, I see the grand illusion of it. The, the whole new world order is now admitted. World government, human cloning for decades, animal human clones, uh, the plan to break up the family. They're putting toxins and, and, and nanotech carriers in the vaccines, confirmed. Uh, GMO is designed to sterilize us, cancer rates off the chart, infertility off the chart. We're under attack. And Trump is trying to batter ram into that deep state, into that secret shadow government system to, to, to get in there and stop it. And that's why they're so damn scared, because you ever had a business and you go away for a month or two and you come back, your employees think that they're your boss? Not really happened to me, but it's happened to people I know. How about this? Your parents go away. You're 17. This kind of happened. On a year-long, excuse me, a month-long trip to uh, Europe. They deserve it. You know, it's their whatever anniversary. They come back, and you kind of are kicked up doing whatever you want, almost like you own the place, until they set you straight. That's what's happened here. Or use the Ulysses and the Iliad. He's gone however many decades and he comes back and people taking over his house. It's the same archetype and now it's been done and the people that have done it are counting on the cowardice of the lawyers and the politicians and federal law enforcement and everyone to keep scratching each other's back, to keep being cowards, to keep going along with the same old crap over and over again while every institution we've got from the colleges to the public schools to the Catholic Church to Protestant churches to the UN to everything gets caught in massive child molestation rings. It's caught in just all sorts of incredible out of control corruption. And you're like, why is this happening? Because we've allowed the worst of the worst to get into gangs and seize control of our culture and our world. And now they're raining down hell on everyone. And they're trying to finish the job and demoralize us and break our spirit. And it doesn't make me want to have my spirit broken when they do this. It makes me get angry that I don't have enough energy or enough will to tell. And I said I'd play all these clips this segment. I got at least five of them. Next, I'm going to be judicious. I'm going to get to them all next segment. But, but I mean, we're here. And the president's own cowardly lawyers, all of them told him, sir, We've talked to Mueller. We've talked to Comey. We've talked to McCabe. You're not the focus. You're not the, no, no, sir. That's a lie. You weren't being spied on. No, sir. No, sir. Well, how does Alex Jones have all my private phone numbers? Well, uh, 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 just don't worry about it, Mr. President. And that, that's the level this goes to. Jones, here's all the numbers. They're spying on Trump and all the documents. I mean, we get all this, ladies and gentlemen. Do you understand that? And I sit here every day mad at myself with the weight of this, with the weight of an anti-human, truly evil, spiritually vampiric world government 
that is announcing Mark of the Beast microchips to buy and sell, global social scores, where if you don't toe the line to teach your five-year-old boy that they're a little girl or vice versa, and don't let the school sign your son up to have his testicles chopped off, you get put in a digital gulag and starve to death. That's their plan. They are already coming for us. The New World Order isn't coming. It's here. And I want to explain something. You're the target. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're straight. I don't care if you're whatever you are. This New World Order wants your ass dead. It's taken over the planet. It thinks you're eating its food. It wants you gone. And it's introducing systems to absolutely, totally, and completely control every facet of what you do and to make you as cowardly and as stupid and as controllable as possible. You know, I see the crew pulling up articles. When I talk about something, they search engine and pull it up. You don't need to pull up Infowars.com. It's on Fox, CNN, MSNBC, human animal clones, human baby clones, edited human genes that aren't really humans in China, cows that grow humanoids inside their uteruses. All of it is in MIT quarterly. It's all public. The plan to end the family as we know it. Germany, 10 years ago, banned by 2020. Single family homes. They've now, it's this year. Next year, they're banned. They're banning families living in homes together. Now San Francisco's doing it. They're banning fireplaces. They don't want any primitive human activity because they want you totally domesticated. They are scientifically overriding you. The globalists say, we don't believe in aliens, we don't believe in God, yet we're going to make aliens here on Earth, we're going to merge with machines, we're going to be the new advanced species, and we're going to wipe everyone out as just a psychotic will to power to conquer and control and dominate everything on this Earth. That's been the plan by megalomaniacs for thousands of years, but now they've got the technology to try it, and they'll fail. But will they kill all of us in the process of failing? That's the big question, and that's why anybody that sells out to this and anybody that thinks you're going to get away with working with this system and not be destroyed in the end, you're a fool. This thing is stinks. This thing has evil and genocide and Satan written all over it. Only a person completely cut off from God wouldn't see how devilish and bad this is. So I sit here every day before I go on air and I think, man, this is such, this is so serious. Why don't people understand? I know they listen. Billions of people have tuned in over the years, but it's not enough. People have to get out of all the different flavors of media and disinfo out there. This is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I want to get into the open announcement with all the talking points by the Democrats and establishment operatives that President Trump will be criminally indicted, not for Russia, but for violating campaign finance law, giving money to women he dated more than a decade ago, which Cohen has been caught lying about that, so that's all a fraud as well. But notice, no Russia, as usual. This is their plan to derail the country. This is all they can dig up on the president. This is just simply amazing. And he's got total crimes by the Clintons, total crimes by Comey, Mueller, all the Obama, the illegal spying, the sellouts to China, Russia but he can't get any of that swamp of lawyers and cowards at the Justice Department to do anything because they're all just such incredible, effete pieces of trash. And that's how society collapses. There's no more men. That's why there's a war on Infowars. That's why there's a war on Gavin McGinnis to ban him because you can't have anybody that tells men to act like men and stop rolling over and being a bunch of jackasses. But then coming up, Blue armored vehicles, EU troops, foreign troops, not since the Nazis were kicked out in 1945, as France had foreign troops rolling in. But remember, Macron got sworn in uh, almost two years ago to the EU anthem, Ode to Joy, not to the French anthem. I think sounds even better. That's how treason flies its flags openly in your face. That's coming up. We're going to play the audio to it and all of it. It is 
truly disgusting. Imagine Trump gets sworn in and we play some, you know, world government hymn. That's how they rub. But here, here's the good news. War in Paris, riots rock city. Three weeks in, tear gas, fury. Looters raid shops. Rush on presidential palace. Pressure builds on Macron. Alarm in Europe. Clashes in Belgium, Netherlands. America next. That's on DrudgeReport.com and NewsWars.com. And our own reporter, Dan Lyman, filed incredible reports. Headlines on InfoWars.com. Footage from the Yellow Vest in Paris, shot by InfoWars reporter. It's on InfoWars.com right now. And again, it's your support of us that allows us to send people in to do this, like Dan Lyman and his team, and doing an incredible job. And that's why it's so important you pray for InfoWars, why it's so critical you thank the local TV stations and radio stations that pick us up and spread the word, and why you go to InfoWarsTour.com and do your Christmas shopping there with T-shirts and books and films and air filters and water filters, all the best systems and great supplements. Shop with us, and you've got my commitment. I'll fight till we beat the globalist or go down swinging. All right, let's go to this first clip. This is McCarthy. He was assistant U.S. attorney. It's Fox News story. Why Trump is likely to be indicted by Manhattan U.S. attorney. That's been the plan all along. Here it is. Uh, there's a lot of people don't like the campaign finance laws, but they are the law, and the Southern District really champions them in a big way. I think that's important because it's clear that they have implicated the president in the two campaign finance violations that, that uh, Cohen pled guilty to and will be sentenced on. Uh, they have the president uh, basically directing Cohen uh, to commit these offenses. Right. So, you know, these are two felonies that this guy pled guilty to, and they have the president uh, directing it. They have the president directing it. Did, did, did you guys cue up the audio? I forgot to ask during the break. Did you guys cue up the famous Trump Cohen tape? Where? Yeah, well, we're going to play that after the next clip. But I mean, the point is, remember they hyped this all up? Dun, 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 we've got Cohen, Trump admitting he paid off somebody. And then he's in there saying, yeah, we got to make the payment. Trump goes, no, what are you talking about? But again, we're Russia, women 10, 15 years ago, Trump giving them money. Cohen says Trump never told him to do it through the campaign. Now he says he did. This is a known liar trying to cover his ass, but it doesn't matter. Trump's his own branch of government. The Democrats are selling this country out hand over fist, illegally smuggling children in, even the Washington Post admits, open borders, selling us out to China, letting China put spy chips in our defense hardware, giving them the Office of Personnel Management hack, Hillary's billions in her illegal foundation paper play, her illegal server, all of it, and then a bunch of angry Democrats running this persecution of Trump, and all they've got is a lying stool pigeon saying Trump told him to use campaign money to pay off a woman when only a crazy-ass person would do that, and there's no proof? Good Lord! If America buys this, then we deserve what happened to us. <sighs> Let's go to Schiff, old angel eyes. I mean, if anybody's got pervert eyes in the world, it's him. Those little, whatever you call him. He mentioned all, he's always like, Hi, I'm Congressman Schiff. Mm. Here he is today, Democrat California, head of the Intelligence Committee now, on Sunday said President Donald Trump could face real prospect of jail time. Here it is. Uh, the filing made Friday uh, by federal prosecutors in Manhattan references individual one about 30 times. Individual one is President Trump, uh, and it appears to link him to campaign finance violations. It doesn't charge him with any wrongdoing, though. What's your takeaway? My takeaway is there's a very real prospect that uh, on the day Donald Trump leaves office, the Justice Department uh, may indict him, uh, that he may be the first president uh, in quite some time to face the real prospect of jail time. We have been discussing the issue of pardons that the president may offer to people or dangle in front of people. Uh, the bigger pardon question may come down the road as the next president has to determine whether to pardon uh, Donald Trump. Uh, now, I think the, the prosecutors in New York make a powerful case 
against that idea. Uh, all the arguments they make about Michael Cohen, the idea that while people are out walking precincts and doing what they should do in campaigns, uh, the rich and powerful seem to live by a different set of rules. So this was the argument for putting Michael Cohen in jail on these campaign violations. That argument, I think, was equally made with respect to individual one, the president of the United States. The president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, says, though, that uh, this can't be a campaign finance violation because of the precedent set. He cites specifically um, what happened with former vice presidential candidate and Democrat uh, John Edwards, who used campaign funding to cover up an affair. What do you make of that defense and interpretation? Well, it's clear the Justice Department here uh, is making the argument that the principal purpose of these payments was to affect the election. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cohen has admitted as much. Um, I think in the case with Edwards, there were problems of proof. Here, it appears the Justice Department doesn't think there's any problem of proving that this was intended to principally affect the election. Uh, and to have uh, the Justice Department basically say that the President of the United States not only coordinated, but directed an illegal campaign scheme that may have an, had an election-altering impact is pretty... So, again, he just changes the subject. There's no Russia gate. There's no nothing. These people are literally selling the country out. The Democrat policy, their platform is, we believe America doesn't exist. We hate America. It was never great. We have open borders. We're going to sell all our jobs out to China. We're in bed with the U.N. Hillary gets billions at her foundation paper play. And now here's your Russiagate. Uh, Cohen says they, they used Trump's money through the campaign to pay a woman. Let's, let's play this other clip. Here's ABC, NBC, uh, hype the inevitable impeachment because he's actually a real president. Right. Are we going to hear more of this in January now from leading Democrats that maybe there are impeachable offenses here? I think it's inevitable, and in fact, I think there's going to be a point where House Democrats are going to feel as if if they don't open an impeachment inquiry over what they've seen so far, then what would be the trigger? Uh, a, a future Congress in 25 years may may be upset that this Congress, that this next Congress didn't do it. Uh, you know, there is so much uh, alleged uh, law-breaking that has taken place that if Congress at all wants to be a watchdog uh, for the executive branch, I think it's inevitable. So, look, I think it's inevitable that an impeachment inquiry is going to get open. And as Jerry Nadler says, it doesn't mean they will end up impeaching him. Right. But I think the investigation is going to open sooner rather than later. They at least oh, have to go there. The they say it on other channels. If, if you look at Chuck Todd and all these people, they work for Obama. They work for Hillary. It's, it's all these people are Democratic Party hacks, the literal party of we hate America. We hate your guns. We hate Christians. We hate veterans. We hate prosperity. We hate everything. Here are these dirt bags all up there. They never tell you, oh, by the way, I'm a Democratic Party operative covering my own ass. Because if it ever comes out we've done in this country, it's over for all of us. National corporations, they have a very sinister agenda of depopulation and planetary control in place. And we'll be breaking it all down the other side with Dr. Nick Baggage in studio. But first, a critical report, ladies and gentlemen, dealing with the Clinton body count because Trump's getting ready to declassify a lot of documents on this. The popular term Clinton body count has been described as a list of Clinton associates who met their untimely death, some by orders from the Clintons themselves. Google has altered its search algorithm to prevent searches for Clinton body count from auto-completing. Just recently, the Twitter account at Robbie12692 released a thread called the Clinton body count. The following are just some of the names on that list. We see the popularity of the Clinton brand being shunned by most Americans. Is this the final curtain call for the Clintons and their criminal cabal? The first major Clinton scandal was in the late 80s. While Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas, there were allegations of a CIA-run operation out of Mena Regional Airport, where guns were allegedly being exported to Nicaraguan Contras 
and cocaine was being imported to fund the operation. Strangely enough, several key witnesses involved in this investigation were murdered before giving their testimony. And several investigators were also murdered. Next came the Whitewater scandal. And oddly enough, several more witnesses and investigators mysteriously died. Most were declared to be suicides. Vincent Foster was shot in the mouth and in the back of the neck with two different calibers, and it was ruled a suicide. And did you know that during the Monica Lewinsky scandal, two of Bill Clinton's female interns were murdered? Coincidence, maybe. Throughout the years, several journalists investigating the Clintons were killed, committed suicide, or mysteriously died. And after President Trump called for an investigation into the Clinton Foundation, strangely enough, several close associates, whistleblowers, and investigators also killed themselves. The Palladino's house exploded. And Lara Projotko fell 27 stories down a trash chute. Is it all coincidence? Are the Clintons cursed? Or are they criminals? After two years of investigation, nothing criminal has been discovered about President Donald Trump. What about the Clintons and their associates? Quite arguably, the majority of Americans elected President Trump to investigate the Clinton and other suspected deep state criminals. The crowds of Americans chanting, lock her up, are not racist Nazis. No, they are simply tired of a lifetime of voting for the lesser of two evils. And many believe that if the Trump presidency reaches its end without bringing justice to the deep state, then it will be a total failure. Nothing will have changed. So let us come together as Americans and seek justice for our children. For only the truth shall set us free. President Trump asks, can Americans handle what I am about to release? We can, and we must. This is Greg Reese for NewsWars.com. We'll be back with Dr. Nick Beckett in studio. Stay with us. To look at the shadow government, to look at the technocracy, which the EU now calls themselves Davos, now calls themselves in to study kind of the mad scientists in, in what they're building. And so for the next three segments after this one, I want to focus on that and, and really who who runs it, what their end game is. But but just right now, the state of the world, again, earthpulse.com is your great website. And, and I'm not going to get into the whole background. Your dad's a famous congressman, whistleblower, your brother, U.S. senator. Uh, we've also got all your best-selling books. We sell your DVDs at M4Store.com. But you are obviously are a scientist and researcher and uh, world-renowned for exposing HARP and so many other things. And now MK Ultra has been more declassified right. this week. We've got the guy that got it declassified on tomorrow. We're going to look at the end game next segment, but the time we have in this short segment, big, giant, blue armored vehicles with foreign troops in Paris suppressing their own population. Uh, global carbon taxes, open announcements of human-animal chimera clones, open announcements of... Uh, Google and other big tech companies working with China to suppress their people and now here. Uh, all of this world government, all of it, it's this weird paradox now where it's not that we're passe, we've been proven right. And so now that we've been proven right, we've got to be suppressed. There was a certain, I think, arrogance the last few decades by the establishment, by the technocracy, thinking, oh, no one's listening. But now that they do know that they're in trouble and nationalism and populism and a pro-human future movement's growing, that there is a move now to kind of accelerate and block us. So what would you, A, do you agree, B, do you disagree, but what would you call this period of time we're in right now? The, the, totally accurate. I mean, in terms of your assessment of the current situation and, and as I see it and how it's developed over the years, it is a tech, uh, you know, the technical aspects of our society. And if you think about governments, what makes governments powerful in the 21st century? It is technology. That is the essence of it. And, and so 
within a democratic republic, and this has been sort of my mission the last 25 years that we've been working together, is to educate people on the technologies that shape what our republic is going to look like now and in the future. And so 25 years of warning, and now what we see is a matrix, really. In terms well, it's exactly of what you warned of. <laughs> exactly. Which is not, we're not like, oh, great, we were right. It's like, oh, my God, we'll be right about the next phase. We're really screwed. Well, I'm I'm kind of a, a little bit of a contrarian in terms of how this is going. No, no, I, no, I agree. I think things are about to boomerang. I think so, too. And people re react to trauma, okay? And we are in a traumatic phase in our history. And I think everybody would agree. And it's not just in the U.S., but I travel a lot around the world. I see exactly the same overlays by the same corporate banking elite community but they they change it just a little bit so the europeans get their little dose latin americans get a different dose and americans and canadians we get a different dose and it's culturally corrected so it fits in it kind of comes in under the door and that's exactly the way it's happened little bite at a time and you can see it's it's globally coordinated absolutely coordinated and that's where that's what really jumps out when you travel because you hear the same buzzwords, the same key phrases, the same push. And then you see uh, where the delays are, like in Latin America, the delay on the current generation. There's still courtesy. There's still people talking to each other. There's still kindness uh, as a general way of being when I'm in far Latin America, Ecuador, Peru, this, these areas. When you look at what's changed... Um, no, you're right. They're removing the humanity from our children. And even if we know what's going on, we can't even save them. No, I mean, we're fight. I fight with it all the time. I mean, um, we deal with uh, our children, and um, I mean, I have still an 11 year at home, and that just trying to overcome the school district programming with my own family programming, if you will, you know, my value system and how I see the world, and it's becoming increasingly more difficult. Media used to be about informing. I mean, when you think about what this program is about, what InfoWars is about, it's about informing the public so we can make decisions within a democratic republic that lead to a better way. Uh, what we see in government and what we see in education now is a way of complying, fitting in, not raising your head, don't stand up, don't speak out. These are the things that political speech has begun to frame with our children. It's classic 1984. I mean, they're Absolutely. going with, like it's an instruction manual. Right. And it's just change the words, change the phrases, and basically, you know, make uh, BS uh, into fertilizer. <laughs> you know, and this is really it. And, and as I look at sort of the shaping of um, what's going on in Europe right now, the backlash, and the French are notorious, of course, for... Um, you know, the beginnings of democracy, if you really will, going back, uh, you know, back to uh, when it was all about eating cake and they dumped the king and created um, a republic. You know, the same is possible again. And I think that's what we're seeing. If you think about spontaneous... I was about to say, you think the French are totally broke back and serving the globalists, but that's where they push the hardest and that's where the explosion happens, right where the globalists didn't think it would. Right. And this is where you put this much pressure on people and you try and suppress people in this way eventually it breaks out and that is what we're beginning to see people are fed up tired of it and, you, and you've been continually predicting that absolutely and I, and I think the other side of it is as as people come through the trauma of it they will reclaim the power of who we are as human beings begin to express ourselves as we were intended as we were created to be to shape the world to frame the world not to be uh, pushed along, molded, and herded through the earth. We're here as sovereign, individual, co-custodians of a planet with an objective to change the world, to push back on the elites, to push back on globalism, and recognize nationalism not just as a theme for the United States, but a theme that's being echoed around the world. Because nationalism is about local, regional values being expressed within our cultures and societies. It's about humanity. And it is about humanity, the diversity of who we are. The and notice the, the, the control corporate left, because I would call you a classical liberal like I am. The so-called leftists, though, would say, oh, get rid of that. No, real diversity is the different communities. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is, when I go to another country, I conform with those social norms because I'm their guest. I mean, that's how I view it. And I travel a, a lot. And I mean, uh, you know, when you go to certain parts of the world, there are certain things you don't do. There are certain things that you, you do. And it's a matter of respect. I mean... In France, a woman can walk top of the sun a beach and no one will blink. Try that in Saudi Arabia and see what happens to you, right? I mean, but these are value systems that cultures accept in one place and another. But but how we react to each other, you know, I don't say we have to accept what everybody does, but when we Sure, well, I think realize there's a big corporate program that doesn't want women to be women, men to be men, right. that is threatened by normal 
human biological instinct and drive. It, it, it's trying to cut us off from our source. Yeah, that's, that's very true. In fact, um, if you go back to sort of the biological side of that, for just a minute to switch over to the science side, um, there are uh, false estrogens all through our environment now. And there's about a thousand of these that are compounds created and introduced to our environment um, annually. And these create um, a feminizing of species. And you see it in the northern regions. The reason you see it in the northern regions and the southern regions where the uh, food chain is the shortest. You know, you go from what's coming out of the air into your uh, lichens eaten by, uh, in our part of the world in the north, reindeer and caribou, and then quickly adopted into uh, human diets. And so you see in the northern countries higher rates of sterilization, feminization of boys in terms of physiologically changing because we have more estrogen in us. From all I was reading studies like the European genitals, especially in the northern, are about a third the size they were 50 years ago. That's, and, and this Sperm is all, counts are gone. I mean, this is, where, this is happening. This is, this is, this happening is species now. death. And this came out of um, uh, a work that was culminated in a book called Our Stolen Future. And it was written by a group of um, MIT scientists and others looking at this a number of years ago. And we lecture together actually in the European... Let's talk about that. So instead of looking at you and top scientists, our stolen future and all the admissions, just have me say they're making the frogs gay as a side note and make it all a big joke. Even though it's all the total holocaust of our species, giving women breast cancer, sterilizing men, but it's all funny. This is real. And this is actually happening. And, and I, when I talk about it being addressed, it was addressed almost 15 years ago in Europe as an issue. And here we are all these years later, uh, periodically reading the uh, news reports about amphibians, which is where it shows up in the, as you mentioned, frogs, and it does. Um, but also mutations, creating genetic mutation as well. And you see that um, in the amphibian species first, because again, they're close to the bottom of the food chain and they're working their way up. But remember, other creatures eat those, we eat those creatures, and eventually it's in us. And this is, again... And, and, and so I want to give you the floor in this segment, because you're bringing up Trump, you can't believe he's still breathing, you know, obviously you don't like to talk about it, but... Your dad was obviously blown up in a plane and killed. A congressman that was exposing a lot of this. I mean, you've got the inside knowledge, but also the scientific research on what we're dealing with. But a lot of people say that who runs it? Who are they? What's the end game? Who's the controlling group? We'll talk about that next segment. But just just, just getting into all that, because there's so many points to talk about. Yeah, people are, are waking up. But at the same time, we're so far down the line with this anti-human agenda. Well, number one, it doesn't take very many. I mean, if you think back on the American Revolution, some say it was two, some say it was 6% of the American population thought it was a good idea. We're in the new revolution. This is a new revolution, not just an American revolution, it's a human revolution. It's a change. It's an opportunity. Trauma causes people to reconsider uh, the base of our values. In that reconsideration, I believe it is going on now. And I think um, when I go back, the predictions weren't based on some esoteric weirdness. They were based on the facts, the documents, the things that we had pulled, um, over 1,200 records we used in uh, the books that I published, and over 100,000 were... You could look at the trajectory through. of what the technocracy wanted. Absolutely, and it was, it was absolutely clear. And if you look at it, the stuff that would have been highly resisted in this part of the world was able to be implemented in other parts of the world. Think of the China social scoring, which we've talked about on the program before, or India. So wherever it works, they like a Lego set or a Rector set, they test different parts. Yeah, and here you could test that perfectly. So what did they get to test? All of all of big data got to test. The Googles, the Apples, the Facebooks. They got to set up all of their monitoring systems in China to meet their standards so they could create social scores for the Chinese. And then they took that same overlay, brought it over here, and now they're using it commercially and politically. Against and, and then they lie to Congress, and it comes out today, even in uh, Business Insider and Bloomberg, that they are lying to Congress. The arrogance. Right, right. And, they, and they will continue to lie to Congress as long as Congress doesn't prosecute people. And that's my next question. The, 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 when I look, because I'm not super technical, but compared to the Congress, I go to these hearings, they don't know. They are like idiots. It's scary. This is a, the biggest problem of all. And in, in the earlier segment, we were talking about how technology determines which governments are powerful, which governments are strong. Think about a Congress without science. How many scientists do we have in the U.S. Senate? One doctor. They're all a bunch doctors. of glad-handing lawyers. Right. Most of them are. So you don't have the technical background. So here's what happens. They go into a closed hearing to deal with these technologies. They cannot take notes, they cannot take their staff, and they cannot discuss anything in those hearings outside of the hearing room. So here they are, uneducated, un, uh, in, in science, unable to ask the right questions and demand the right answers, knowing whether they're lying or telling the truth. And these are the technologies of this century that decide whether governments are strong or weak around the world. 
our congressmen, our senators. And that's how you get a clapper five years ago saying yep. we've never spied on anyone in the U.S. when everything's being spied on. No. I, I mean, it's like saying the sky's not blue. So what do we do? I mean, because it's not like some elitist thing like, oh, my God, I know 10,000 times more than these senators. It's scaring me. I, I, it's not a good feeling. Nope. And and, and I would was, I was say this. Is, is a lot of them are just plain misinformed or uninformed. And so the key elements for me have always been try and provide information. I always encourage people that have listened to me, take the printed material because all of ours is heavily footnoted. And when they have relationships with their congressmen, their senators, or people moving up, give them the material. It's well-documented, well-footnoted. It's not opinion pieces. And, and start to inform and recognize that every sovereign citizen has the ability to step in and take a little step in that direction. So, so the CHICOMs and the EU and these big corporations are way ahead of our governments. They've already launched this total AI takeover program. How, uh, looking at it, so you like to get into nuts and bolts. That's great. I do too. But at the end of the day, it looks more like an arms race towards technocracy, an arms race towards AI where all these different factions are battling to get the best AI because they believe it'll give them life extension or the keys to the universe. Right. And I, it's almost like a crazy gold rush. Like we're saying, what's their master plan? Their master plan is keep us in la-la land while they invade the future. Well, and here, here's the thing. It's almost a contrast. On the one hand, you have what we are as created human beings and what our, our latent capabilities are as human beings, which have been talked about. You know, 2,000 years ago, these capabilities were talked about. Then you have the technologies creating sort of the false um, gifts, if you will. Yeah, counterfeit. And so on the one hand, man wants to be what man has been created to be. But on the other hand, um, I don't think the globalists are... No, I agree. They're telling us we're now. crap and failed and they're going to transcend us because they don't have access to that. And that's definitely true. And, and when I look at leaders, I mean, I've met a lot of national leaders. I've met a lot of people in high position in all of them. Every one of them has a deep philosophy. And if you can get into that, if you can find out what their core is, then you can see how what they really truly manifest in the world. And it's really getting into the value systems, the base of a person, then how they project into the world and whether they carry that. And well, let me ask you this, not to get into of, info wars, but, not about, but why are they, because they are definitely upset about info wars. Because it works. Because it works. Because the public gets engaged. People who listen, 70 million listeners globally. globally. More or less. In yeah, a that's a conservative number. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've dialed us back. Yeah. Yep. But when you look at that many people that, that become energized with knowledge that they can then act on, and, be, and because many of the hosts, many of us, give people some ideas of what you might be able to do even. You know, step into it, you know, contact people. They don't like involved. the empowerment. That is really what it's about. Because when that's people, it. We're empowering. That's exactly it. That's the whole. Because it's not a cult. We're saying, no, you're the leader. Right. And this is the difference is when people recognize that true leadership is an upside down pyramid. All right. Leaders are on the bottom holding up each level as it goes. The way the globalists do it is the opposite. The guy at the top is pressing down the populations. It's exactly the opposite. Well, exactly. And the globalists think we're idiots because we want to empower the general public. That's where the real all this everything shows. That's where the real spark is. Well, then go back to the founding fathers. It was about the individual. It's about the sovereignty of the individual, the gifts given by the creator to the individual that we got to express within our world, within our government. And look how much that's changed from a, a population that was geared towards building our own program. And defense was not about defending someone else's interest. It was about defending our homes. And so we've gone from defending our homes and defending, uh, you know, our value systems to try and shoving certain value systems on other people's throat that truly don't represent the average American. And this is what I find also is when I travel, people like Americans. I don't care where you go. They like Americans generally. They don't like our government very much. Now, what does that tell you? This government does not reflect Americans very well. It doesn't reflect our character very well. It doesn't reflect our value systems and who we are very well. And the whole left-right paradigm doesn't reflect it either. No, it doesn't, because that is not what it was about. It was about invigorated debate. The press, this is why InfoWars still exists and why it's powerful, because that First Amendment that talked about freedom of the press, it wasn't about saying whatever you want. It was about keeping you informed so you could decide how this ship sails, so you could decide what was important in the government, and so you as individuals could decide. Exactly. They don't want the general public putting in their two cents, and we're individuals. It's this paradox. I'm an individual collectivist. We indi we have individualism, but then when we individually see what's right, we build a collective that's actually from the people that they fear, not the top-down false collective. And that's exactly right. This is at night. We're going to be adding new shows here very, very soon.
Infowars.com and Newswars.com. We're all over the map during the break. Like, how is Trump still alive? Why the globalists hate him so much? How he's trying to release the, a lot of these secret technologies? Uh, who actually runs the globalists? How they keep it compartmentalized? Just get into all your top points here. I, I would say, you know, when you when you start to think about uh, globalism, it, it is really it's a banker's cabal from my perspective. It's, it's primarily economic interests, the big old families that like to keep everything. <laughs> Which then dehumanizes. It all sees us as human resource. That's exactly it. And you hear it in the media. So it puts the us into these actuaries. That's why it so dehumanizes. Right. We're reduced to consumers, taxpayers. And why it's obsessed with getting us into a digital world government, which they admit, because then they really control us. And, and uh, Americans, whether we realize it or not, um, all the data that we have on, on us that has been uh, collected and collated and warehoused is now and we and we said this it would come that we would be able to sort that data and now they can so the the idea of individual profiling is so precision um and able to predict what you're going to do where you're going to do it how you're going to live and i said in friday's segment you know one of the ways to start to disrupt this system is do searches that are exactly the opposite of what you would normally do do 10 of them a day and you start to mess up their ability to profile you accurately, and it's actually in your interest. I mean, think about the issues you're really interested in, and then know your side of the story, but then take a look at the uh, contrarian side. Just dive into it and pull that data in. So now you're better framed, A, for your own debate against those that have differing opinions of yours, because you know their arguments, you know yours. Secondly, you throw the globalists off in terms of who you are and how to profile you, because you're no longer doing what so many liberals did in dropping into their bubble world where all of a sudden the only thing they see is... And instead of letting it all be a one-way scientific algorithm studying you, you start manipulating it or even telling it other stuff you want it to look at. Like I was sitting there this morning with some folks having breakfast in Fredericksburg with my wife and kids. We were looking at how Hitler crazily went and got Satan's seat out of Babylon, seat of Pergamon, and built it in those big Nazi speeches. He's saying, I'm Lucifer, I'm God. How crazy is that? But that's mainline history, folks. If you think I'm kidding, just type in uh, Hitler, Satan's seat. And I said, what's something ridiculous? And there was a picture of Tom Selleck on the wall because he'd visited the restaurant. And we said, let's all do searches with Tom Selleck now. Right. So we searched <laughs> Satan's seat. Next, we did Tom Selleck. Sorry. <laughs> this is exactly it. You know, and somebody somewhere is going to develop a, a computer program that you can just kind of run in the background. And see, this would be ideal. Have a computer program a in the back. that's just just sending out all these false searches all day long. And we just saw Tom Selleck on the wall. We just said right. Tom Selleck. Right, and this is the kind of thing that messes them up. And 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 and, it's, and you can't avoid it anymore. And when you think about um, again the shaping of culture, you cannot avoid it anymore. The idea of but AI. See, you see, we're individuals, but it's collective. I was doing that this morning, and you just said it. Yeah, and here we are. And you know, this is how it actually works. This is the actual aspect of it. Is you and I are joined as brothers in the work that we do, and, and just because of who we are as human beings, we all are. We just don't always recognize it. We don't always wake up to it. And, the, and we get closer and closer synced as humanity moves to the next level. And then, you know, you say left, and I go left, and you say right, and I go right, and I say right, and you're already there. Because we're in sync in it. And Ann and I had this discussion. Uh, she's traveling with me uh, uh, this week, and we had this discussion earlier today about the idea of how finely toned intuition is becoming. The more you listen to it, the well, you it you is. said this twenty years ago, and I'm like, okay, a little. It's happening. It's <laughs> all. It's I can't believe it now. It's like you're either in sync or you're not. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And 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 you know that the segment I did with Rob Dew when I was down here the last time, um, where we really got into the meat of this, and it was one of the best segments that I ever ever did. And and the feedback um on that was what was the name of it we should put that back um out. it was uh breaking the zombie trance um dr nick baggage breaking the zombie trance and it was great i mean in terms of explaining those details and you know where it started it was started over dinner when you and i were talking that night and we were all having dinner and i had said i, I had said to you about we were talking about trauma and how it changes us how it alters us how it makes us way different than um than otherwise we might be in other words, the challenge... But instead of being losers, we use the trauma for strength. To, for strength, to learn from. And, and, I, and we just stopped by um, uh, O'Henry's uh, house here in Austin today, and there was a line that I read, and it was about when he went to prison here. And that's where he did his writing. That's where he changed in the worst of his life. He's in prison. He becomes the writer, uh, the writer of the, of the last century that produced so much uh, great material. But it came out of his trauma. Um, where I changed in my life was when my dad disappeared. It changed me. It profoundly altered 
who I was. You wanted to know who runs this. I want to know. And I wanted to know then. And I wanted to also know what is the way through this. Um, and I believe we're in that way through this. I think people are awakening around. And what was it your dad that was a congressman, uh, but, but a good Democrat? What was it, old-fashioned Democrat, what was it he was doing wrong that made them so mad? <laughs> well, he was doing a couple things. One, one he was transferring uh, national resources back to Native American population in Alaska. And over uh, at that time, they wanted to give $20 million to settle this um, Native American claims. What is worth trillions? And what they turned into... How much is it worth? It's, oh, unbelievable. Trillions and trillions. Yeah. Okay, because what it turned into was 44 million acres, not 20, and it included the surface estate, the mineral rights, the water rights, and all rights that ran with the land. And, so with, and they got priority selection from all federal lands. So they got to go in and select and basically make sure that their treasury was intact and that they reclaimed some of the resources. The globalists didn't want it. And, and in fact, my dad in Congress, his freshman year in Congress, he got this passed. Unheard of the biggest native land claims in American history, settling with over half of the Native American tribes recognized in, in, the, in the United States are in Alaska. So this was a huge, huge settlement. But what it did is transfer wealth. The biggest domestic companies in Alaska, in Alaska, Alaska-based companies, are those very native corporations that were formed then and grew and developed their resources. They, they produce billions and of Trump's dollars. And Trump's been doing the same thing, saying we should get the people involved in Western wealth. And, you That's know, not alluding in there. It's just amazing, though. To just to see how crazy this is. And we have been fighting in Alaska for over 40 years for the opening of Anwar, and Trump did it. Trump did it in his first couple of years. Well, let's, we're going to go to break. You're going to be back this whole week getting the big picture right. and who's behind it. But a few minutes, because I know you get attacked for, you know, you've been a Democrat, whatever, but you're independent. But Trump, I mean, why do they hate him so much? <laughs> they hate Trump because he is not part of their team. And he is actually delivering on his promises. And, I mean, he talked about the economy. He talked about trade. He renegotiated NAFTA in he three months. Out TPP. I yeah. love Tucker Carlson. But Tucker was a little wrong saying Trump didn't deliver on abortion or on uh, getting totally rid of Obamacare. Trump's done all the other stuff's happened. I don't know how you expect him to, you know. You know, there's some things he's not going to be able to do. All right, and people have to acknowledge that. But the important things he is doing. He's dealing with immigration. He's dealing with taxation. I mean, the major overhaul in taxes that just just happened. I mean, he he finally is taxing U.S. corporations on their foreign income for the first say, time. I'm not even that wealthy. I, my taxes went up, but I saw it go down for everybody that works here and everybody else. I realized, God, this is like actually an old-fashioned Democrat. I mean, <laughs> it was like he got he got rid of the uh, the property tax write-offs for people. Right. Which and he kept the ones for the average person, the average ten thousand. But, but like the Democrats that don't pay any tax, they put it in their hundred million dollar house. It just inflates the prices for everybody. Right, he killed that. Right, and so which hurt him? Things. Yeah, yeah, that really scares them. Well, here's the thing. You know, I, I sat with my uh, family on, on election night when, when Trump was elected, and my son and I voted for Trump. Uh, and we were the only ones in our, in our family, I think, that did. Uh, Brothers was U.S. Senator all of you. Right. And, uh, and we had some. We had the liveliest debates, I can tell you, that night. In fact, we, fe we felt like, okay, we're going to let this go because I knew Trump was going to win. I knew when he, when he filed he was going to win because of two reasons. One is he was a disruptor. People were, were looking for disruption of, the, of what was going on in the status quo. And secondly, he was authentic. He, I mean, I got to say, he can be an ass, but he's America's ass. And sometimes you need one. You need someone tough enough, hard enough that will hammer back for a change instead of always backing off and falling down. And he's the one that is not backing down. I was going to say, on about an hour into the show, you're about War Room tomorrow. We've got some big guests in studio, too. I can't tell you about it, and even bigger stuff on Tuesday. And let me tell you, uh, it's got the globalists upset. But you, I was saying, what should you tell people in this final segment about this battle for human will, the human soul, the human consciousness? That's what it's all about. And then you just brought up, so I'm going to go back to me, but you were bringing up, listening to the show, and the point you made on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah, and it was the fact that, you know, uh, you know the, the globalists have offered you opportunities. Uh, and at one, I, I remember you talking on the air about $10 million a year. And you said no which was a signal to them that you're not corruptible. Something similar happened to my dad when Alieska Pipeline so, tell Corporation came into his office and tried to bribe him. Now, that my dad was in his inner office, so his staff's all in the other room. They tried to bribe him. My dad was not a violent man. He's a very calm guy. But he literally picked the guy up by the back of his collar and the seat of his pants, and he skidded him across the uh, Longworth Building hallway floor, which is about 20 feet wide, uh, and told him they just about lost it because... If it wasn't so important for Alaska, that would have been the end of that piece of legislation. But he was incorruptible, and that was the same thing that they realized about you. So what is the solution? The solution is to try and silence your speech. 
And this is why it is so critically important right now for listeners of this program to support this program, to look at the info store and look what's held there and what's sold there, because these are the ways that this thing stays on. It doesn't happen by itself. It happens because this is your network. This is your information. But expanding on that, it's just them speaking out. They don't want info wars because it's populist and it's pro-human. These globalists want to shut it all down. That's right. And you're just the first. I mean, they're gonna you're going to see this come against everyone. And this is why even some of the uh, strong uh, liberal scholars are starting to talk about the fact that this can't happen in America. Freedom of speech is about being able to say what we want. People do not have a right to not be offended. Well, People don't you love argue. how, though, when they come after us, they always misrepresent what we said? Absolutely, every they time. They edit it, they take it out. It's never what we said. No, they never give you enough time. They never give you the full scoop. They only take that the satire. I mean, it's actually satire when you're delivering it, and they try to make it sound like it's some well, sort of statement. Let me ask you this statement. Then. You've studied the technocrats. You said, don't worry about chemicals. It, it's it's the electromagnetic that they're really doing. The Chinese government with their 5G, the arrest of the head of this company with chips and all the phones. I mean, we're in a total war. I don't even know that behind the scenes there's a huge war for this country to even survive. What would you quantify that as? And, and, and how do these mad scientists? How do they communicate? How do they uh, interface? How do they run this system? A lot of them don't even see it. They're just in their little knothole looking at their little piece. So because of they're puzzle. only following mathematics. It's yeah. sociopathic. Yeah, they're just looking at it. And actually, uh, sociopathic behaviors in leadership is not uncommon. In fact, there were some studies. It's rewarded. Yeah, in fact, it is rewarded because they're the ones who are, unfortunately, the head of many companies, the heads of many banks, and the heads of many governments. Um, and this so because they're totally cold-blooded and go bottom line, which means cutting out other people's free market systems, then that's how they get ahead. That's exactly it. It's, it's about stomping on the other guy on your way up uh, and using people as stepping stones. And so many of these folks, and this is where the dehumanization of it has happened, we are divinely created as human beings to do something in this world. And it has to do with stewardship. It has to do with our fundamental... Obligate. Well, it's a test. Well, you're a smart guy. Yeah. What is human's ultimate mission? I think it is a test. You know, this is about a test of who we are at the same time as our opportunity to it's demonstrate. pretty obvious. We're on a planet way out in the middle of nowhere. We're given incredible power. We, yeah. And we're learning. We're here to learn. And we learn through our trauma, through our problems, through our errors. This was a message of forgiveness, for goodness sake. This is the, the idea of Falling down, standing up, and straightening out. You know, it's about being responsible, being accountable. So the people Jeez. taking over and trying, going, oh, my God, humans have incredible potential. Let's wall it off, dumb them down so we get it. They're failing the test. That's exactly it. Because if they keep you in a constant state of fear and anxiety, you cannot reach your higher states of awareness, your higher states of consciousness. What divinely has been created in us cannot manifest in fear. That's why when the angel arrives, the first message out of the angel's mouth fear is not. fear not. Let me expand on that. People see what I do, kind of frantic and think, oh, he's scared. It's the opposite. I intellectually and spiritually make a decision. I see it's right. Then I get frantic, like your house is on fire, warning you get out of it, it's on fire. Right. And people think, oh, he's trying to push fear. No, it's the opposite. It's a message of not fear. It's a warning. <laughs> it's a warning. warning. Okay. And so the balance between that is sometimes difficult. You know, you and I have very different styles, but we have the same message. And so some listeners can hear my message and, the, and others can't. They can hear yours. This is why it, it takes a core of people, and that's what this network is. I just can't believe that more people don't. It's such an easy choice, pro-human, pro-future versus globalism, that you can just, the stench is just. But, you know, it, it overwhelms a lot of people. Think about how most, 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 most of us work. You know, everybody's working all day. They come home, they're tired. And they don't want to hear about some big, giant, global cabal they got to fight. Nope. They're, they're watching entertainment TV. Right. I mean, think about the junk on television, how hard it is to sort through anything worthwhile. But it's basically to divert, to distract. It's just jamming. It's just jam. Exactly what it is. It, you could call it jamming. It was best best word for it. Because even the advertising, think about it. It's talking about how you smell. It's talking about your breath. It's talking about oh, all your hair things. fell out. Women don't want right, you. Right. Right. All this stuff. And it generates anxiety, fear, and questioning yourself, questioning your self-image, questioning who you are as a human being. Those are all important things. But Stepping beyond that and knowing that we are created divinely, perfectly, and we need to start to recognize, fall more into that of who we are Once and resist. Once we get the timelessness and that definitely our data, who we are, goes on forever, it's not even a debate about it. We know inherently that takes the power away from them. It does because the fear is gone.
When you know this is a snapshot between short interviews, uh, this... So how do you deal with the fear of not delivering? Because I'm not afraid of them killing me or taking everything. I'm, I am afraid of not doing enough to stop them. You and I have had this discussion. I had it with you at that restaurant a year and a half ago, and I remember it clearly. And, and what I would say, Alex, is you run 110% all the time. God doesn't require it of us. 90% is good enough because God wants that 10% reserved for you to lift you up. And so I would say this, we do our best. That's all that's ever required. It's not always succeeding. It's doing our best. And uh, I know that about Alex Jones. Every day he does his best. And given that 10%. I think that's what they hate though, is that they know hey. that we have feelings and they claim we're weak because we have feelings. No, we're alive because we, we have feelings. We are human beings. And we feel all of those emotions. And that's what makes us human beings. That's what makes every one of us human beings. So then who are these corporate guys? They don't even have feelings. They don't have it because they've lost their compassion. They've lost touch with who they are. You know the intuition I was talking about earlier that we don't listen to? If you quit listening to it, that's also your conscience. That's the part that tells you right and wrong what you should and shouldn't do. When you turn it off enough, it no longer registers. That's a sociopath. So feeling knowing who you are, expressing your emotions freely. This is what makes us you. I agree, but what happens then when you always answer it and then it turns up and then it's like a big antenna drawing it all in, then that's what's crazy. Well, and it, and it happens, but here's what also happens, you know, it's, and, 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 and I, it's moths to the light, right? Something else I've heard from man is moths to the light. You know, your bright spot in the world, they attract all of this nonsense. Because it needs, it, it is attractive. Let me ask this in closing. And you're going to come back this whole week and have right. time to, or, or you can do whole videos if you want to hear just yourself talking. Some people hear what you have to say. Certainly the energy of the earth is going off the chart right now. I can't right. even handle it. I mean, you call it what you want. It's it's like, it is wild right now. What would you call it? The quickening you predicted, but it's here. Oh, yeah, it's here. And and I would say it's a reflection both of, of our own consciousness and what's happening. When you see disruption in people, you'll see disruption in the planet. These things are all connected. There are no systems separated, and science shows that to us today. So as human beings express all of this negative emotion, you're going to see a lot of things within the Earth, traumatic things within the Earth. I just went through a 7.0 earthquake in Alaska. And the biggest message for us in Alaska is, Within three days, we were all up and running. Before the afternoon was done, the grocery stores were opening and the gas stations were running. And within a week, people were back in school because we know what trauma is in this realm and we can overcome it, just like people with hurricanes in the South and other places. But we are in... And notice the globalists try to create... They try to remove overt trauma, but covert trauma to control us. They don't, they don't want people to interfere. No, they don't want to connect. And here's what happens in those traumas. We connect with one another. All of a sudden, all the political stuff goes away and we recognize each other on our foundational, who we are as divine humans, we begin to help each other. By the way, I tried three times during the break to get you to plug. If you won't, we <laughs> sell them at .com. People can go to earthpulse.com and get your DVDs, your books, all of it. It's amazing information. If you want the real science, mind control, when you come back this week, they just declassified more mind control, Right, MK Ultra. so we're proven right yet again. Hey, I appreciate being on with you, and I appreciate, I appreciate you. everything you guys do. Hey, let me hear a prediction. Are they going to take Trump out, or is it up to us? I think it's up to us to continue uh, to support this man as much as we can, uh, to try and, uh, and get him the information he needs. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, because he's got a lot of feed coming in, and he needs information. What you just said, the enemy admit they most fear our information getting to him. That's because right. Because they 